Hello everyone, I am Ali Rahman. And this is Shuan Sharia from the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering of Asanarul University of Science and Technology. Today we are going to talk about the company fact and company schedule. We want to thank our respective teacher for giving us this wonderful opportunity. Before we start, I want to highlight exactly what we want to take away from this presentation. First and most important, what is Compton effect? Second, how classical physics failed to explain the light scattering. Third, how Compton came along and explained the light scattering. Fourth, how to derive the formula of Compton effect. And finally, what are the applications of this phenomenon in our modern age? So, what is Compton effect? Compton scattering is the inelastic scattering of a photon by a Cauchy free charge particle, usually an electron. It results in a decrease in energy of a photon, which is called the Compton effect. Part of the energy of a photon is transferred to the recoiling electron. The Compton effect was observed by the author Holly Compton in 1923 at Washington University in St. Louis and further verified by his graduate student Y. H. Who in the years following. Compton earned the Nobel Prize in 1927 in the Department of Physics for this discovery. Now that you understand the principle of Compton effect, I am going to talk about the classical story of light scattering and its limitations. Classical mechanics assumes that light energy is a self-propagating harmonic wave of electromagnetic fields. It also assumes that there is no limit how small the energy in a light beam can be. But classical theory of an electromagnetic wave scattered by charged particle can't explain the low intensity of incident light. In addition, classical electromagnetism predicted that the wavelength of scattered rays should be equal to the initial wavelength. But multiple experiments had found that the wavelength of the scattered rays was longer than the initial wavelength. After that, physicists were very confused and had some other explanations. Then Compton came along and proposed that Einstein was right that light behaves as particle as well. Author Compton and Davy both provided in 1923 a very simple mathematical framework for the momentum of those photons with Compton having experimental evidence from firing X-ray of unknown frequency into graphite and looking at recoil electrons. The experimental demonstration of the Compton effect is shown in the figure given below. Here we can see it uses a Bragg's X-ray spectrometer. A beam of X-ray of a single known wavelength is directed at the target and the wavelength of the scattered X-ray are determined at various angle theta with the help of Bragg's spectrometer. The distributions of the intensity of the scattered X-ray are plotted as the function of their wavelength at different scattering angles. It can be seen that for each scattering angle there are two peaks corresponding to the different energies as predicted by Compton one of which is same as of the other wavelength lambda of incident x-rays and the other has the wavelength lambda as dash prime greater than the lambda. Now we will see the intensity versus angle graph. In the first graph, when theta equals to 0 degree, there is only one peak point which is lambda. In the second graph, when theta goes to 90 degree, we will observe two peak points which are noted as a lambda naught and lambda bar. As the angle increases, we will also see the increase of intensity. In the third graph, when we will decrease the angle 90 degree to 45 degree, there still be two peak point, lambda naught and lambda one. But the difference of wavelength will be much less than the previous one. In the final graph, when theta goes to 135 degree, the difference between lambda and lambda 1 increases. So we can tell that if the angle increases, the wavelength will also increase and intensity as well. Now let's see a video regarding this experiment. Now we will quickly go through the derivation of this formula. 
In his explanation of Compton scattering experiment, Arthur Compton treated the X-ray photons as particles and applied conservation of energy and conservation of momentum to the collision of a photon with a stationary electron. Using the Planck relationship and relativistic energy expression, conservation of energy takes the form h nu i plus m e c square equal to h nu f plus root over p e square c square plus m e square c to the power 4 which is equation number 1. Conservation of momentum requires p i equal to p f plus p e which is equation number 2. Where p is used for the photon momentum, squaring this equation number 2 using the scalar product gives this equation which is marked as equation number 3. Again, using the Planck relationship and the relativistic energy expression, P e C square equal to H nu i whole square plus H nu f whole square minus 2 H square V i V f cos theta, which is equation number 4. Now, by squaring equation number 4, we get this. We consider this equation as equation number 5. From the equation number 4 and 5, we get this equation. This equation can be rearranged to 1 by h nu f minus 1 by h nu y equal to 1 by m e c square into 1 minus cos theta. And finally, the standard Compton formula is lambda f minus lambda i equal to delta lambda equal to h by m e c into 1 minus cos theta. In this part of our presentation, I will show you some of the application of Compton effect in our daily life. Firstly, radio biology. Compton scattering is of prime importance to radio biology, as it happens to be the most probable interaction of high energy X-rays with atomic nuclei in living beings and is applied to the radiation therapy. Secondly, to prove the wave function. In material physics, Compton scattering can be used to prove the wave function of an electron in the momentum of representation. Thirdly, gamma spectroscopy. Compton scattering is an important effect in gamma spectroscopy, which gives rays to the Compton edge, as it is possible for the gamma rays to scatter out of the detectors used. Compton suppression is used to detect any scattered gamma rays to counteract this effect. As we bring our presentation to an end, we thank you for listening to us. We would like to thank our respective teacher for giving us this wonderful opportunity which has given us the clearer understanding of Compton effect and scattering.